Thank you for coming to watch Dr. Smith's video today. We encourage you to hit the subscribe button and the alert button. That way you can get notifications when he uploads a new video. Thank you for coming today. So we hope you take the time to hear and think about it. And if you have a book, read in the book about the concept and the topics that we talk about. They have a lasting effect. The intent is not necessarily to treat pain, but to make permanent long-term correction with your whole family and your friends. Thank you. Make sure you subscribe and hit the alert button. Have a good day. Have a good day. So today we're going to talk about chronic pain. I remember. Pardon? I remember. Okay, that's okay so I'm a little confused about that. The, if you get inflammation, it's because your body is sending little red, white cells in there to clean things up. But it all, So do you not want to get rid of the inflammation? Or do you want to get rid of it because it's so, get, so you don't need it? I mean, I don't understand quite what you're supposed to do about it. You know, that's a, that's a very good question. And I'll give the answer. Okay. As I understand it. Okay. So, and it ties in well with what we're talking about today. <clears throat> so, we're, today we're talking about chronic, chronic conditions. So, when you have a new condition, like your, your wife had several new conditions, that's, that's called an acute. An acute condition is a quick flare up, a cut, an injury the flu, you know, any kind of trauma to any tissue, any organ. <clears throat> when you have t tissue that's been traumatized, whether it's <clears throat> mechanical, like a, a burn, a, a bang, a cut, chemical, like too much food, uh, an organism like a parasite, a virus, a fungus that got into the body somewhere. And, or even today I saw a lady who has had major family stress due to parents being sick and siblings fighting over what to do, you know, the right or wrong, and all the opinion. That's trauma and it's an acute trauma. <clears throat> the body will always, within a few hours, start to fix it up. Just like a good mom would, you know, you spill them up, they're right there cleaning it up. The body does the same thing. And that's the inflammation. Inflammation is when the body is trying to clean up an acute issue. If it's significant, you'll have pain, you'll have swollen, swollen, you'll have redness, color, and you'll have heat. That's, that's an indication that the white blood cells are joining on the spot, all of them trying to clean up. Some are doing one thing, some are doing another. We've talked about the Army, Navy, Air Force, Marines, the, neutral, the neutrophils, lymphocytes, monocytes, eosinophils, they're all there doing their part of the cleanup. That's inflammation, okay? That's a normal first step to healing. Now, your question, you have an injury, you go to the hospital, and they give you an anti-inflammatory, right? Mm -hmm. That's your question. Yeah. Why the anti-inflammatory? Because that's what they do. That's standard protocol, anti-inflammatory. Is that good or bad? Well, both. Here's why it's good. It's good because they don't want the, the inflammation to get out of control. It, they don't want it, the body to do <clears throat> to do too much, <clears throat> so they try to slow it down. <clears throat> you can slow it down some with with a anti-inflammatory. 
You can also slow it down with cold packs. Cold packs. Cold packs. Not ice. Why not ice? Because the tissue has already been damaged. You don't, you don't want to add to the damage by putting <clears throat> ice on it because you make it worse. But if you cool it, it slows it down. Now I'm, I'm a believer in local cool systemic heat. So if I, if I had a bad injury, I would, I would put, again, in a hot bath up or sauna to get my whole body, my whole body warm because I want my metabolism and my whole body to kind of speed up a little bit to get through this project quicker. And I would put cold on the location of injury. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Like your wife's knee. You know, cold on the knee, but systemic heat to enhance speed and metabolism. Any comments on that? So you're saying not ice, but this thing they give her is a, a cold thing you put on her. There's not necessarily ice, but there's ice in the bucket. That's fine. Causing That's cold. Fine. It the, pumps it through, right? It's yeah. perfect. It keeps it cooled off. Yeah. Keeps it's it only cold. for twenty minutes and take it off. Yeah, and that's and that's a very good thing to do. I say I say put you know at home, take some ice cubes, put them in a plastic bag, put a wet towel around them a couple of times. So you have a thickness of a few layers of towel, put that on the spot, you you're doing the same thing not put ice directly on it. Now, I used to buy things, and it was give me things from the different companies that would, plastic bags with a chemical in that was flexible, you could keep in the freezer, you could put that straight on. That was not a good thing to do. But you could take, we could take that out of the freezer and wrap it in a wet towel, and that would bend. That's a good thing about that. Now, <clears throat> let's talk further about the same injury. If the body has <clears throat> floating around in the blood, some virus, some fungus, things that never sees on the live blood and also there's bacteria. The bacteria look for a free meal. Easy prey. Easy prey. Easy prey. And that is tissue that's damaged. And if that the bacteria get into the tissue that's been damaged, now we have another problem. Now we have <clears throat> infection. <clears throat> infection is different than inflammation. Infection is when you have a, an organism that's looking for a campsite to go to work. <clears throat> that's what you don't want. And that, <clears throat> so again, that requires then a different kind of therapy because now it's not just the cleanup. Now we have the, the acute damage. You have the cleanup going on and they have a war going on in the tissue and it can, if it gets the infection, it, the infection can spread and they have, can have a systemic problem because that now you have more breathing going on, you have more growth of bacteria that are bad or virus or whatever. So in my discussion, that would change the condition Think of a tater-totter. On one side of the tater-totter, we have what I call functional, functional problems. You've had an injury, you have tissue that's not doing what it should do. It's less than capable of doing what it normally does, but it's not necessarily gone bad. It's just injured. But when it starts to break down, then it becomes pathological. Now it needs different kind of care. 
Okay. I had a question slash comment on before okay. um, with the acute inflammation and is it good or bad? Yeah. I could be wrong on this, but my understanding is that if it's say something like a joint, a sprained ankle, yeah. part of the reason for the swelling inflammation is to act as a temporary protective splint to, to protect the damaged tissue. So it's good to have the swelling, so, but not crazy. Totally correct. Yeah. As long as it's not excessive. Yeah, as long as it's not excessive. Now, <clears throat> one of the questions on the test today is, can you have it acute? Like, like let's talk about, say a sprained ankle. Can you have an acute injury that doesn't heal? You've exceeded your shatalas some way to injure it. You didn't take proper care of it, <clears throat> so it's... <clears throat> Now, compromise in function is not normal. It's not even close to normal. So it's easy to re-injure. So it went from being acute to attempting to heal. It didn't heal. So at what point do we say it's not acute anymore, it's now chronic? How do, do we wait? One day, two days, a week, two weeks, three weeks. And so he's selling a bad ankle, a bad knee or whatever, and it hasn't healed. When is it officially medically called chronic? The answer is medically, for some reason or another, they give about three months. If a condition has not recovered or stabilized, now it becomes a chronic condition. Let's talk now about a car accident. <laughs> Boom, you tear, you strain, you strain, a lot of tissue in the spine somewhere, maybe in the wrist or the shoulder, knee, ankle, depending on where you were in the car when you got hit, <clears throat> ribs, <clears throat> and they don't heal, then, then they become chronic. Can a chronic problem become and the kid problem again. I guess if you hurt it again. Yes. If you exceed to Shatavas again, it could so it can cycle from acute, chronic, get it better, boom. Now it's back to acute, chronic, chronic, chronic. You can have you can have a, a chronic problem for a long, long, long time with several acute flare-ups, several acute flare-ups. So it's not uncommon when a person presents to the doctor <clears throat> to have an acute flare-up of a chronic problem. Now that's often the case with people who have multiple car accidents. They have an injury, they hurt themselves, never quite recovers. Then they have another car accident. Now we have a mess. Mm -hmm. We have a mess because we've had tissue that's compromised, re-injured. The second injury doesn't heal as well as it would have if it would have healed completely the first time. And that's where insurance companies and attorneys get and our doctors get an arm wrestles and fights over who's going to pay for this. Because the opposing attorney will say, well, you had the problem before. Pre-existing condition. Pre-existing condition. And they fight and a good, a good attorney for the patient will say, yes. But if it hadn't been for this new accident, that old one would have healed. And now we have complications. And the healing now on the new accident will not be as good as if it would have been the first accident. Mm -hmm. So if you're going to hit somebody, 
is somebody that hasn't been in an accident. <laughs> oh, how do we know that? Ask them first. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It, it, Can we get in an accident with you? It keeps it cleaner. Okay? Yeah. Makes it lag. <laughs> makes it argue less. Yeah. So the so that was a long answer to a short question. Does it make sense now? Yeah. Yeah. Do, do you understand the concept of not putting ice on a new injury? but cold and systemic heat, that's always good. You know, it's always good to have a hot bath to speed up metabolism. Mm -hmm. you always, it's always beneficial, even from, a, even from a preventive standpoint. I learned from my own experience that mm -hmm. the time it takes to have a nice bath before we go to bed get my body temperature up, relax it, that helps my body heal better at night. Mm -hmm. Okay. So it's possible to get better and better and better, even though that's not a current acute issue. Now, let's talk about chronic, chronic condition in real life. At our age, we'll all have a number of chronic conditions. I'm going to use my book concept as I go through this discussion. And Deborah, you didn't get this page, so it's all handwritten. Thank you. Is that it one is for Betty. Oh, okay. So it says my chronic conditions. So this, this sheet is to allow you, if you want, to take the time to do self-assessment in each of the three categories, the mental, emotional, and spiritual, so that's in the center, <clears throat> structures on the left, chemicals on the right. <clears throat> I put some words down there to give you some ideas of chronic weaknesses. <clears throat> I'll give you a couple of examples, true, true life examples. I had a class one night in my clinic in Colorado Springs. And one of my patients brought the dad. The dad was from Texas. When they finished the class, the dad said, I have an ankle pain that I've had for many years. I had an injury, I had it treated, I had PT, I had worked the, 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 the brace, the split, went through all the kinds of stuff. I have pain every day in my ankle. Would you take a look at it? I said, sure. The class was over. I got down, I checked his ankle, I checked his knee. His ankle was misaligned. It's been that way for a long, long, long time. It had some swelling, still had ongoing inflammation. His body is still trying, st still trying to heal, heal that old injury that he aggravated every day by walking. Just a routine act of walking did a micro to the ankle. And he said, this is out of alignment. Let me just move it a teeny bit. So I, moved it a bit and worked on his leg and his knee. I said, that will probably help you. <clears throat> about, about a week later, he called and said, I want to see you. He came to my, to my office and said, I'm, I'm going back to Texas, but I want to tell you something. The pain left that night and it's never returned. <laughs> oh, no. Sweet. Just one little, one little thing. I saw all those years. I checked him over in you know, a data exam and told him some things to do. And about two weeks later, I got a package in the mail. He worked for San Antonio Shoe Company. <laughs> he sent me a new pair of shoes. <laughs> Most of us know them as SAS. Yes. Oh, yeah, shoes. Very good, very good shoes. Yeah. I like that and said, those are ugly. <laughs> 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 
and I put it on and said, oh, they feel great. <laughs> so I've, I've had since then I've had several pairs of shoes, but, but that, one, that one little part of his body affected his sacrum because they didn't walk right. It affected his knee, it affected his neck and shoulder. He had a lot of secondary compensation. So on the sheet, he could put, you know, ankle, knee, hip, low back, neck, shoulder, as chronic, chronic, low grade problems. So, and some of you have chemical problems like gut issues, you, when you eat or when you, you digest food, you get constipated or whatever. Those are chronic problems with how food is processed, how it's eliminated, that's over on this side, any kind of issue. Now, when, to, when, when is the best time to fix a small hole in the bucket? When it happens. Yeah, when. Take care of it. As soon as you can. As soon as you can. Before can. it gets bigger. Before it gets bigger. <laughs> yeah. Before it ca causes holes to develop in other parts of the body. Because an ankle problem can create a digestive problem because it causes adaptation in the spine that affects the nerves and they go to the gut. It's all related, you know, you're all of that. Yeah. So on this sheet, this is for you to fill, to fill out a few things if you want. And then at the bottom it says solutions. Things you, that you can do to help yourself overcome the issue. The issues. And Die. Pardon? Die. Die? 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 Come on. Wow. Don't fix it. We are all going to go there someday. <laughs> now, and if you want me to get involved, bring that in and, and I'll help you tweak a few things to help you get better in the tar target area. Now, again, speaking of chronic conditions, the idea with a chronic condition is to try to identify them when they're new. Like you said, the best time to fix it is right now. Don't I, ignore I, it. I, what? Don't ignore it. Don't ignore it. I, another tr tr true story that just happened. Um, I had a lady call me Monday morning in a lot of pain, a lot of pain. And I happened to have a cancellation. So I said, come now. She, she had excruciating pain in the back or hip. And when I checked it, it was hard like a board. It, I mean, it was spasm. I, said, I asked her the question, when did you do this? She said, well, two weeks ago. <laughs> two weeks ago. I thought it would get better. Well, it didn't. It got worse and worse and worse. She said, I, I think I broke my back. In fact, she did muscle testing and she said, I, I, I think I broke it. I checked and said, no, you didn't break it. It would have healed fast, faster if you had broken it. But let's unwind you. So she had a major acute problem from trying to open a garage door on her own. It was stuck, it was too heavy. And what do stubborn women do when they don't have any help? They try to do it themselves. <laughs> <laughs> and her back gave rather than the door. So the, the good news is, you see, overall, she's tough enough that she responded very well to just unwinding. So she had, she had scoliosis. Oh. That's, which is a chronic condition, and she had an acute flare-up, which was intense. 
the time to fix it would have been within 72 hours. That's my general rule to any of you. If you have a new event, you cannot self-resolve the majority of it within 72 hours, you probably need, need some help to do it, okay? Usually if you have a new issue and you do active self-care, help the body do what it's trying to do within 24 to 48 hours, you'll have significant improvement. If you don't, you probably, again, need some help to get things lined up. Now, when I teach you how to do the active self-care, the circle slide is one of the key factors for everybody. And I recommend that from all ages, all to the end, because the body will heal better when it's aligned better. When you take a breath and slide your leg, you help the low back. When you turn out, you help the lower ribs. When you turn in, you help the upper ribs and the neck. Okay? You do it slow and easy to give the body time to react. The, the next most important one is the suboccipital therapy that you do when you hold the base of the head, raise the chin. You, we've done YouTube videos, I think you were here, Deborah. We timed it, we did the whole thing in less than three minutes. Yeah. And you can do that as a preventative measure to fix small holes in the bucket. Now, does that affect you chemically? Yes. Does it help your digestion? Yes. Does it help your Assimilation of nutrition, yes. Does it help your elimination? Yes. Does it help your lungs? Yes. A lady yesterday who, in, in class, she talked about doing ex exercises to improve her breathing. She kept talking about her breathing muscles and doing steps and doing treadmill. And she's a Fairly young, that means about 50. You're still young, Deborah. She's always been an athletic, and she's concerned about her lungs. And so after class, we had an appointment, so I said, let me check your breathing capacity. I said in class, you probably have, most, most people have lung restriction are restricted because of mechanical problems. The ribs are torqued. They don't expand like they could or should when you breathe in and breathe out. Normal chest expansions should be about two and a half plus inches. Should change. So I checked her. One inch. That's, up. That's it. Sitting, that's how to stand up because sometimes it changes when you stand up. Still, about an inch. So I put it on the teeth on. I showed her a simple exercise. Again, for a chronic, a chronic problem with restricted breathing. Now, that's very common for COVID patients because they didn't. They didn't breathe properly. And for lack of further explanation, I'm going to say the edges of the lungs don't, they, they did not work. The edges did not work. So I had her stand on the face on, and you can do it. Take a deep, you take a deep breath and turn as far as you can, hold in the deep breath, and then blow out a little bit of time. And every time you breathe out, you will go a little further. So you may breathe out four or five times. But then, because you've now cleared out the lungs to the maximum, 
then where you're still in that position, you inhale as much as you can in that position. And then turn all the way to the other side with the ribs, the chest, the shoulders. And repeat that, that motion. And do, I had to do that three times. I said, okay, let's measure and see if that made a difference. Okay? What do you think happened? It increased, it increased the diameter of her, she, her chest. She went from 36, 36 inches. When she was breathing, she'd go to about 37, 36, 37, breathe in, breathe out. She then went from about 36 and a half to almost 38. So she had bigger to start with and went more than an inch and a half. Wow. Now that's huge. If you, if you had a barrel and it was that big around and you made the barrel an inch bigger, you'd have a lot more fluids, right? Mm -hmm. right? A lot more. Now, along that line, 75% of the toxins that leave the body should leave the lungs. And if they don't, you can't get the toxins out, where do they go? They stay around. They stay in. They stay in. Now we have a chronic, a chronic toxic problem. What helps the lungs? The kidneys. If you don't drink enough water, now we have more problems. <laughs> okay? Yeah. So we can turn one chronic problem into two chronic problems, you know, three chronic, we keep adding chronic problems. And slowly what happens is the level of the bucket, the energy in the bucket goes down. And as the energy in the bucket goes down, guess what happens typically? You can have a healthy body when the bucket is half full, Eighty-five percent. Two. Eighty-two percent of more. Eighty-five. You want a B plus. Okay. A B plus. It's a B. B or B plus. When it goes lower than that, and you have less energy in the body for any reason, you start to have minor problems with minor organs. Then you have minor problems with major organs. As it goes down, you have major problems with minor organs. And now you get down to the bottom, you have major problems with major organs. And then you're close to death. You don't die when they get down to the bottom because the body has reserve energy. Where? In the bones, in the blood, in the muscle, in the fat. You have some reserve energy. But that's what happens. And, and it's, so you keep adding these chronic problems. So, the idea behind this class and the worksheet is to help each of you become a little, just a little more alert, a little more aware mm -hmm. of minor problems, small holes, fix the ones that you can fix. If you need help fixing some, like I know when you go see, get the, the live blood analysis, you see some minor stuff. Yeah. Sometimes it's major. Yeah. Well, since I had COVID, that just makes sense to me because that's what happened. I can't can't take the deep breath as much, and my energy went down, and it's hard to get it built back up. Yes, that's right. So, what if it takes you a year to get it back up? Is that better than not getting it back up? Well, yeah. you gotta start doing this <laughs> with these things, but. You know, this you describing how that this happens. That's that's what, what happens. I look at it and it's kind of like, yeah, that's what happened when I got COVID. And it's taken me, well, I, I'm still doing what I'm supposed to be doing, yeah. but I got a question for you. Yeah. I have chronic knee pain, but I only notice it when I'm trying to kneel on my knees. And does how can that affect my body? 
the quick answer would be, you know the answer to the question. <laughs> okay. Well, I guess I don't get on my knees to pray. <laughs> well, the, so again, a, a real st story. I, I laid it today to a pie. I said, what is your major concern? She said, my knees. I laid her down, checked her. I said, yeah, your knees are, your right legs turn out. Your, your knees not straight. Your pelvis has torqued a lot. So her problem today that was triggering the knee was a chronic pelvic misalignment with not even balance. So then I ask the question, have you been doing your homework? <laughs> and she said, well, no. <laughs> off and on, off and on, sometimes. I said, okay, next time they come in, I'm going to break your toe. <laughs> if you don't do your homework, because your knee won't get better, it'll get worse. If they don't keep the pelvis aligned the best it can. Now I'm smart enough to know that she can't she can't take the chronic misaligned pelvis, boom, and put it back and expect it to stay. It's going to take repetitive microtherapy over time to help realign it and remobilize it to balance both sacrum sacral leg joints. So the knee, I worked on the knee, showed her something else to do for her knee, like a book between the, the knees and the foot flutter. And <clears throat> she's been doing that off and on. Well, off and on doesn't work, okay? You need to do it every day, yeah. For, to train the new puppies, they need to be trained daily. So so at least six days a week. I have a question on that. Yes. Because I went through this a couple months ago, I remember I went hiking in bad shoes. I buckled my knee. You told me to put the book between my knee, do the foot flutter. I did it religiously for some time until the pain had been gone for some time, like a few weeks. And then I started doing it sometimes, every just every once in a while. Well, all of a sudden, the pain is back. Did I not retrain the puppies for long enough? Correct. <laughs> Correct. Correct. Yes. So how do you know how long is long enough? We rely on research. Let me share with you with you some research. 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 If you have a if you have a, an injury that qualifies for disability. And the federal, federal government is going to pay you disability. It won't even talk to you. None. For, unless it's more than one year, one year post trauma. Why? Because they know it takes tissue that long to grow up, become a real dog, and be able to do real stuff. Okay, so what you did was very common. It's one of the hardest things I have to deal with when I'm helping people recover. They get out of pain. And they quit doing it. And they stop doing what they did. No, I them. did it for a good another month. Yeah, another month. <laughs> See, and now you know, now you know that you didn't do it long enough. So, so what she told us about was she had an acute problem. She took great care of it. It became chronic, but quote, subclinical. No symptoms. Subclinical. It quit hurting. Quit hurting. But it was not done. No. Then she had an acute flare up of a chronic underlying condition pre-existing, and guess what? It'll happen again if she doesn't do, keep her knees 
aren't feeling straight, the pelvis aren't feeling straight, but no pain from it. That's why when I tell you to do the, that's why we do a review on the active self care, yeah. top to bottom, and why you do it. It's prevention. Okay. I think if you know if we had proper physical education in junior high and taught all kids who were you know 10, 12, 13, 14 years old how to do daily active self-care would change our country completely. Now we do just the opposite. Mm -hmm. They don't give them pee, you know. They don't make them. They're not active. They're, they're, not, they're not active. And they, they give them heavy packs. They, they give them crappy food. So, you know, we're going downhill. But we all do the best we can. So I'm going to pass out this other sheet. Is this any helpful to you? Yes, it's very helpful. If it doesn't start getting better, is it? Is it time to go see somebody or what? What? If you're if you got that a pain and you're doing the stuff and it doesn't and it just gets worse, then what do you do? That's when I like to check in and see where we're missing out. Because sometimes see sometimes it can be like I checked a lady the other day who had a problem with her shoulder. She walked down the hall one arm's going like this. I was just barely dragging this one going like this. That wobble is creating all kinds of compensatory issues down in the pelvis and the knees and the feet. So sometimes it's a shoulder problem that's preventing the lower part of the body from recovery. Yeah. Sometimes it's opposite. Sometimes the ankle or the knee or the hip is preventing the neck or the head from recovering. That's why. That's why it's important to check the whole thing, and that's why I did the sheet because when they can't see me, my my whole objective is to assess and to coach and have you go do the work. Yeah. And I, I can guarantee you all, if you don't do the work, you won't get <laughs> You won't get improved. I just, this makes me think a lot about the people I work with in the chemical realm of things, because when people come to me for blood work, a lot of times one of their main things is weight loss that they're looking for. They've gained weight, they can't lose weight, whatever. And they start to get a little frustrated after a month or two or three when their weight hasn't changed. And I realize I have neglected to do my job in explaining that we have to fix the underlying stuff. So the pain that they're feeling isn't gonna change until yeah. the mm -hmm. other mechanisms in the body heal. And then the pain of the weight will change. So sometimes it's, unless it's actually getting worse, um, Sometimes it's that tissue is healing, but you also want the pain to change, right? Yeah. Does that translate for you with? To to totally. Yeah. See, and when, 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 <clears throat> when, I, when I talk to anybody that has any kind of a digestive problem, I know that I know there's some kind of problem in, in the alignment of the body, which affects the digestion process. The, breakdown and assimilation of nutrients. Also know that if there's, a, if there's a weight problem, there's always associated with a lack of sleep, lack of water, plus the misalignment. It's, it's always a complex issue. <clears throat> that's, that's why I, I, I'm strongly opposed to a simple diagnosis. A lady today who's all focus on rheumatoid arthritis and wanted to get on the right medication. So she's been, been to the rheumatologist and they're playing sort of the dart with different medications to see which one relieves the symptoms the most. She 
you know, a symptom approach. And it's, 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 right now. She'll never, uh, I help her, and she do, she was doing part of, this, part of this stuff. She's uh, slowly breaking down chemically. Okay, so let's go to this test. <clears throat> Number one, th th this is key. My belief in the body's ability to recover and my attitude about pain were two essential keys that can give my body's recovery potential. True. True. Now, let's talk about attitude about pain. And that's number two. Pain can be a needed teacher. <clears throat> for, for example, <clears throat> if you came to me and said, I have a chronic problem, and I say, well, let's do this and this and that. And you do that. And you say, oh, man, what, what we did made my problem worse. I say, good. We know we're on the right area. Maybe we did more than you could tolerate, more than the tissue could tolerate in its current condition. You've heard this, you know, the surgery was a success. We did a perfect surgery, but the patient died. Mm -hmm. Why? They had other problems. Number three, chronic conditions exist on a pain and function sliding scale, both, both pain and function and need to be recognized and prior to us so appropriate changes can be made. So if you have a minor, um, small hole in the bucket, a minor, minor function or problem, it's, you need a totally different approach than if it's pathologic. You know, is the knee pain functional because of your wobble? Or is it pathological? Is it breaking down? That's why I'm never, I'm never opposed to anybody getting additional x-rays, additional blood tests, additional MRI, CAT scan. The more we know, the more we know where it is on that scale. Sometimes they have no pathology. It happened again this week. I had a lady who passed out in the bathroom, fell and got hurt her back, and they took her in, they did you know, four thousand dollars for the test, and said so mm -hmm. there's nothing wrong, nothing wrong with you. Well, it was, but it wasn't pathological; it's functional. So we, we do a different approach. Well, that was true. True. Four. What was number two? True. Needed, but needed. Pain is, pain is always good. Yeah. It tells you that something's it's a, wrong. It's a teacher. <laughs> I must be a slow learner. Pardon? Sometimes we're slow learners. Me too. I, I that's why I'm here. Because <laughs> it goes out the window sometimes. We all, we all live in a certain amount of denial. I think we do. We do. We do. You know, you ask her, your mother-in-law says, how's it going? You say, great, you lying dog. <laughs> <laughs> I know what's going on. It's not great. <laughs> you lying because you don't want to say what's happening. <laughs> yeah. When people ask me, how things going? I say, how much time do you have? <laughs> if you really want to know. If you really want to know. We're, yeah. we're have to Most down. people don't want to know. No, no, don't. That's my answer. Usually you don't want to know. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good answer. You don't really want to I got too many problems. <laughs> okay, number four. The degree of pain, that's zero to, zero to ten, is usually directly related to the degree of threat to mortality. In other words, the more greater the pain, the more close it is to killing you. True or false? True. False. <laughs> the pain won't kill you. Well, most people who die from heart attack had no symptoms until that one. Yeah. They had a chronic underlying condition. No pain, boom, they died. And yet you can have men, not, not no offense, but men are usually wussies when it comes to, <laughs> when it comes to pain. How about it? Another true example. 
You're a big, tough guy? <laughs> well, his thumb was a symptom of a down, what I call a downstream problem. He did sit on a tractor, like this, you know, turn, his whole body is turned, his neck is turned. So his main problem was not his thumb, it was his neck, his back, his ribs, his low back. He was totally torqued, but the symptom was right there. So, the answer to that was false. You say the pain level is one to five, it's functional? True. Once the pain is a six to ten, pathologic. Pathologic means, pathologic means it's, the tissue is breaking down. You can see it on an x-ray, you can see it on an MRI that the tissue has gone bad. True. A condition that, that exists for how long this transitions from acute to chronic? I told you the answer to that. E. e. Three months. Mm -hmm. Either a functional pathological condition may cycle from acute to chronic, back to acute to chronic, back to acute to chronic, as if one exceeds two symptoms. True. Nine, usually when pain is reduced and limited, the condition can be considered cured. No, no. False. Cure, cured is a... Yeah, that's a... Just like when she was explaining that she was doing her stuff. Thinking that there was no pain, am I cured? No. <laughs> and, and just for your, so you know, medically and legally, cured is a bad, bad trap. So that that pain question actually makes me think back to um, when you had your stroke. Yes. Very, very serious problem. No pain. None. Pain is not an indicator. I, t I jammed my pinky. Bad oh, man. pain. Yeah. Little That's... problem though, <laughs> right? Right. Ten. Pain can be considered good when acknowledged as a teacher. Right. True. Eleven. Lotions and potions are excellent remedies. They cure both acute and chronic conditions. False. You better say false. <laughs> where does all where does all healing come from? Above, down, inside out. Not lotion and potion. <laughs> they may release symptoms. Is that good or bad? That's well, good. It's, it's good. That's good. That yeah. relieves them, but if you need to sleep, that's good. Well, lack of pain is always a dependable sign that all is well. False. Number 13, this is a bonus question. During the caffeine, it was an effective pain relieving procedure. Probably true. true. The answer is true. That's, how, that's why they first used it in World War I, in the battlefield. They used caffeine to relieve pain. <laughs> and it works. It works today as well as it did then. It would help you. You gotta do it though. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you gotta do it. Get loose on it. And then a question to comment. I well, the funny thing that hurt my knees about it was 2010 when I fell off the steps of the airliner. <laughs> well, and they were never treated. I mean, never even been checked. Well, next time they come in, let me check them real close. We'll see if we can make some kind of change so they don't get worse and worse. 